Hi guys, it's Wendy from Fingersticks Gallery. Um, so a few videos ago, I did uh, the deco art pouring medium on this black canvas. Um, and I'll show that to you really quick. I was going to do that initially, then I put all my paint on it. So this one, it turned out really dark and it cracked a little bit. Uh, I was trying the deco art pouring medium again because we have a very bad relationship and we're trying to work things out. Still not working great. Um, this painting actually looks really neat. Um, it's a darker, um, darker painting, but it looks kind of cool. Um, but it's just not, it doesn't have the, the factor, the wow factor I'm looking for. So I've seen a couple people online re-pour over some, and that's what I'm going to do today. But I'm going to utilize the background and do... Uh, hopefully to look like planets. So we're going to do a ring pour over this canvas in certain little spots. I'm probably on this corner here, I'm going to do like a big planet. So we're going to do a big ring pour on this and then maybe a couple little smaller ones throughout the rest of the painting. So, but I'm going to do three different color combinations. And, um, oh, before I do that, I'll show you my, my last painting from the last video. This was the, and I was going to call it the scrambled egg pour because this corner up here looked like a, a reverse scrambled egg with a broken yolk. <laughs> so this was actually a yard sale find uh, with the little uh, gizmo that I found and it had um, little ridges around the outside. So I poured in that and did like a floating cup and the, the texture is kind of neat. You can, if you close your eyes and squint, you can see the texture of that little gizmo that I use. So the colors weren't great, but there was leftover paint that I had, and I just wanted to show you the garage sale find gizmo. So that was kind of cool. Okay, so we're going to do several different kinds of paint. We have ice blue from Folk Art, sterling silver from Folk Art, the royal gold from Folk Art. Those are all the metallics. So it's these three right in the middle. And then we're doing just the regular black from Apple Barrel and then just plain old white. The white that I use, I actually use the Bear House paint, the 100% acrylic. I, it works great. If you, if you add up the cost, it's actually a cheaper way to go. And I pour it back into a, a V8 bottle and I just mix it with my pouring medium. So my pouring medium today is 80% Floetrol, 20% Elmer's Glue All, no water. Um, I, I don't, I don't like adding water anymore to my pouring medium unless I really have to, and then I'll add it to the paints as needed. Alrighty, so on this bottom corner here, I think I'm going to do a mix of three colors. I'm going to do, we're going to do white, and I'm going to put them on the side because I don't really want to put it back on the canvas. So this is the bigger one. So how about we do white a little bit of gray, a touch of blue, and we're going to do the white again. And then I'm going to, I'm going to chance it, put a little bit of black in here. Hopefully it doesn't make gray, but my consistency is a little bit thick. So I found with these ring pores, if you do them a little bit thicker, they don't tend to bleed together quite as much and I don't like them to bleed together. So, okay, we're going to do the big, the big moon or the planet or whatever you want to call it. We're going to do that one first because I want to make him the biggest one and I'm going to spread him out a little bit. So I'm not going to add gold to this one. Okay. That might be enough. Yeah, I'm going to do it on this side. This side doesn't have the most or as much um, personality as the rest of it. So, and I'm going to pour it right in the middle and I'm going to pour it over the edge. So it's only kind of peeking out a little bit. And I'm going to move the cup around a little bit. There we go. There is no oil in any of these paints either. So, but I do tend to mix my paints pretty aggressively. 
So there is going to be some bubbles and it's going to make a cool, uh, I think, effect on these little planets because once we pop the bubbles, it's going to hopefully make like crater holes or something. That would be kind of neat. All right. So we're going to spread this guy out and then we're going to flow over the edge. So normally I like to prep all of my canvases first. So you don't have the rollover on the rings so you don't lose a lot of your rings. Um, this one, obviously I can't do that because it's already been painted. So And I don't know if I'm going to have enough, oops, sorry. I have a, I actually have a, a chicken light in here with a LED light bulb. So it's hanging kind of close because my lighting in here is really, really terrible. So, um, just trying to give a little bit more light. So I have a chicken light hanging down here. Oh, and I'm going to have to help this guy just a little bit. I didn't quite put enough. But that'll spread out a little bit. So if you need to help it over the edges, I definitely recommend that. Because if you help it a little bit, it'll follow the other paint. So that's another reason why I like to prep all of my canvases when I can. Because it follows the rest of the paint and it'll make it a lot um easier for it to flow. So oh, we might just be putting the planet right there because he's got paint on it. Okay, so it's not the best texture of a planet. Um, but this is kind of I don't want to call it a scrap canvas. Um, but it may end up being like that I may just uh, prime and paint over it because it's not really my favorite, but it gives you kind of a cool idea of what you can do if you really, really honestly do not like one of your paintings. And I don't know if you can hear that, but that would be, <laughs> you could probably hear that. That's uh, Joey barking at the sheep and then Otis growling at Joey because he wants to play. Having animals really is like having children. You can't ever hide. I have tried hiding. Can't do it. Actually, we're going to do gold in this one. Yes, I like my peace and quiet sometimes, but honestly, don't always get it when you have critters running all over the place. And we have a couple sheep that, oh man, no matter where I'm at, they will come find you. They are so darn friendly. Which is a blessing and a curse because they like to follow you out the gate too. And you don't necessarily, especially when you're running late for work and they want to follow you out the gate and you have to get them back in before you go to work. Which this is, oops. This is an early day for me to be painting because I've got to go to work and be there by nine, so. But I woke up early. <clears throat> so I'm not really doing these any, I'm sort of doing them random. I'm not exactly paying too close attention, uh, attention where, um, where these are landing in what order. help that blue out just a little bit. Probably help the gold too. Okay, so maybe the black will be the last one to come out and I kind of want the black ring on the outside but you probably heard me say this before, paint has their own little way of doing things and no matter what order you put them in, they're going to kind of do whatever they want. So don't get frustrated because just because the last color you put in isn't the first color that comes out, don't <laughs> kind of ignore that because it doesn't always work out that way. 
Okay, so I'm just going to kind of randomly do little planets around here. Put a little one over here. And I was going to do them in several different cups, but considering they're all going to, the paints are going to come out in their own order, in different orders every time, I didn't mix another cup because I don't really think I need to. To make this guy a little bit bigger and whether or not you look at it and the the bigger planets are closer to your eye or if they're farther away and they're just a huge planet you know what i i don't know how this is gonna oh well we're gonna put one there because i just dropped it in there again i don't know how this is gonna turn out but it's kind of a cool experiment to try just i don't know if you guys can see that guy over here <clears throat> let's see I have a little bit of paint it's starting to get a little bit muddy in the cup we all do one here so when you guys when you get to the bottom of your cup when you do these ring pours they do tend to get a little bit muddy because you're moving the paint around quite a bit when you're going either you're going back and forth up and down or around in a circle or sometimes even if you don't move the cup at all which I like to call the slow ring pour because if you're not moving the cup, it's still going to make rings, but they do tend to get really muddy in the bottom. So I don't always use the last little bit of paint that's in there. So there's, there's still a good covering in the bottom of my cup just because it gets so darn muddy and it's okay to throw that little bit away. Okay. So I'm not going to move this around too awful much. Um, I don't really like this little guy in the back. He didn't really come out round, but I'm going to kind of help him a little bit. Okay. We're going to move a little bit. Oh, some of the tails don't look all that great. Yeah, I should have caught the tails a little bit better because anytime you leave a little tail like that, it's really, really going to show up. It'll look a little 3D. So, yeah, that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm keeping my eye more on the bigger. There's two large ones that I just poured. Because the large ones are going to bring your eye in a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. So... I'm going to try to make those two large ones as round as I can. And then kind of bring it back to center a little bit. Okay. So yeah, that guy, I'm not too impressed with his tail. This one a little bit, but that one, you know, a little bit more. So I'm going to torch these guys, bring out the bubbles. Yeah, be careful when you do that too, because the rest of your canvas is still dry, is dry. So I did not varnish this. I don't want it catching fire, but just be aware if you do this and you do torch it, I, you know, I'm not responsible if you light your canvas on fire. So just be really careful. Always have a fire extinguisher on hand. But if you can see, it brought up a lot of bubbles in this one. That one does look kind of neat. So Hopefully when this dries, um, cause I use a little bit darker colors aside from the white, it won't be as much of a contrast cause the background's pretty, pretty dark. So 
anyway, um, I might add a little bit of stars. I might actually flick some uh, watered down white paint or even a little bit of gray and just flick it. Um, so we'll see. I might make some stars um, at a later date. So we'll see. Anyway, this was my early morning pour. I just wanted to show everybody what you can do if you have a kind of a lousy canvas that you're not super, super happy with. Um, and I'll bring you in for a close up. So that one is the, the neat looking one. I really like that little guy and they're all a little bit different. This one looks kind of neat down there in the corner. Actually, I don't know between this one and the other one are probably my favorite. So, but anyway, you can add to your paintings. You can embellish them and make them look hopefully kind of neat. If you end up liking, liking this or not liking it, um, when it dries, I'm going to varnish it. So it'll look a little bit 3d with those metallics. So, all right, guys, good morning. Hope everybody has a great rest of their week and, um, never be afraid to be a beginner and until next time. Bye-bye.